So, good morning everyone. Today is engine service day, but I thought uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of actually getting dirty and doing the stuff that an engine service needs every 100, 120 hours, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about four major things that every day skipper and coastal skipper and in fact anybody who owns a boat with a diesel engine should know about and know how they should actually work. And it's quite simple. You need to know your cooling system, number one. You need to know your lubrication system, number two. You need to know your power system, how the system for the power works on your boat. And lastly, you need to know how the fuel system works on the boat. So if you, can, if you know those four things and how they work on your diesel engine, 99% of your problems are solved, unless you've got serious engine defects, in which case you need an, a specialist um, diesel mechanic to sort that out. But generally, those four key areas, power, lubrication, cooling, and fuel, are the four systems that will enable you to service your engine and uh, work on on most stuff. Um, I generally service my engine every 100 to 120 hours. So today with the service we're going to be checking everything. So we're going to replace the oil filter, the oil, we're going to check the fuel, we're going to check all the cooling systems, we're going to check all the nuts and bolts on the engine that nothing's loose etc. Check the fan belt tension, all those sort of basics that you should do uh, on a regular basis. So I've got one of my students, Leonie Moritz, who's, who's, um, who's looking to find work overseas. She's done all sorts of various courses, including a diesel engine course, but she doesn't have much practical experience. So she'll be joining me later on to help out with, uh, with the practical aspects. We will run the engine for quite a while first, probably five to 10 minutes, so the oil's really nice and warm, so I can pump it out um, of the sump. And uh, I'll show you close-ups as we're going along and just chat generally about, uh, about the engine and how those four key aspects work. Okay, chat to you later. The other thing I wanted to show you before uh, we take the panels out, this is my engine compartment here. So these two panels are going to come out. There's my battery selector down here and those two panels so I'll take the whole of the starboard side of the the engine compartment comes out then if we walk around the companionway and we come down into the skipper's cabin you will see here this whole panel will come out so I'm going to be removing that to make my access to the engine and engine service that much easier and uh, we'll chat further see what a difference it makes with the panels out um, just to give you an idea see those panels on the starboard side out there's the battery selector it's on one which is the engine batteries this is the engine compartment stuffing box water inlet and uh, gives you a pretty good idea how how pleasant it is to work on this engine because it's easily accessible I always stay, uh, say the state of the boat's engine gives you an idea of whether the owner's looking after his boat or not. And uh, this engine should give you some indication that I take my engine services and uh, that sort of stuff quite seriously. Okay, so uh, I'll get some light, get some more light into here and run the engine, run it for about 10-15 minutes and then I'll start pumping the oil out. So. This is the suction, you can see that's, that's going to suck the oil out from the sump, so I'll remove the dipstick and stick the pipe in and just keep sucking. It takes quite a while because it's not that easy. And there's probably about 5 litres of oil, 4.5 to 5 litres of oil that need to come out of the engine before we disconnect the old um, oil filter. Uh, switch the engine on, you can hear the engine in the background and I've engaged forward gear so that the uh, gearbox can also the oil in the gearbox can be checked and lubricated as well you check that so if you come down and have a look 
So I've run the engine for about 10-15 minutes and I'm going to start by sucking out the warm oil. This is the dipstick, so we'll take the dipstick out. Maybe I should put this camera somewhere where you can know, see. So I've got lots of old rags because it's quite a messy job at times. So this is the dip dipstick. Move it out the way. Now the suction pump goes in that same hole so here I stick the suction pump in and stick it down that's it and we start uh, And the first job is to start so all I do is I just start pumping. Now you can see the oil starting to come up. You can see the oil there. You can see in the pipe coming closer sucking up. Here it comes. So this is a slow, painful process, and there you can see it's draining, draining into the container. So this will take a while, and I'll show you later on when most of the oil is out. You can see the oil starting to suck in at the bottom. Each one of these rings is a litre. That give you an idea. You can hear the oil sucking. It's the, probably got two, two and a half litres of oil out. Um, and we've been sucking till cows come home. So now the next thing would be to remove the oil filter. But I was telling Leo, only the four key things about a diesel engine that you need to know are lubrication which is engine oil and gearbox oil um, oil filter etc power how your power system works from your batteries through your battery selector battery selector through to the engine the third thing is your water cooling system from the stopcocks you see the red handle down there it's a stopcock coming into this uh, filter and from the filter it goes into the engine and the last thing is fuel. In other words, from the fuel tank, you can see the fuel going through two filters. I've got two water traps, that big, uh, that big rack oil filter with the original filter on the old engine that I had there. And then it comes through into the engine filter, which is here. This is the engine filter. And it's got a, uh, it's got a lift pump here. This is the lift pump. These modern engines are almost self-priming as opposed to the old ones where you needed to know how to prime. But just on a couple of things you can see, what I've done is the mounting bolts, like these here, for the engine mounting bolts here, I've covered them with a special grease impregnated webbing so it doesn't rust, so that the bolts don't rust. Uh, little things like that make it easier because what happens, you might get water in here and it, it causes all those bolts to rust. So it's a good thing that we'll, we'll check that. So at the moment we're with the oil, with the lubrication. We've sucked as much of the oil, oil, old oil out now we're going to remove this oil filter here but it's quite a messy job so i'm going to use this uh, monkey wrench to remove it and i'm going to put some old cloths and a bucket underneath there so to catch any of the oil uh, that comes out okay, so in that 
plastic bag there. There you are. There's a couple of clusters there. I have to put that in. So we've replaced the oil filter. We've checked the gearbox oil, and we're going to. Yeah, give me that red one. That's it. And we're going to now start oil adding engine oil. So we've taken the the strainer, cleaned the strainer, you'll see it's like a swimming pool filter, cleaned the strainer and we're going to put a bit of grease on the lid before we seat the lid back on the top and make sure that there's no air being drawn through there because if there's air that comes through there you're not going to be able to pull the water through the engine, it's amazing. A little thing like not having grease on there will you see those two flanges there where the prop shaft the prop shaft goes through uh, the stuffing box there's a flange there yes. and you see there's that black pipe that rests on top of the stuffing box yes. that comes from this blue uh, stopcock here from the top of the strainer right. and the red handle is the main water intake for the engine but you want to have water going you want to lubricate that uh, that propeller shaft if it doesn't lubricate properly the propeller shaft overheats. Yes. So that stuffing box needs to drip once a minute or so, a slight drip. Not too much. If it's too much, you just give those two nuts, you give them a little, uh, turn. A little turn just to tighten it and so on. What does uh, that thing do now? That's connected to the... Um... No, it's not. It just looks like it's connected to that green pipe and then comes around here. Oh. It just looks as though it's connected to the foot. It's not. Leone. Yes. Tell us in a few brief moments about your engine service, what you learned from your engine service. Well, I learned about fueling. You first take out, with a specialized pump, you take out all of the old oil. And after you've removed all of the oil, and well, before you do that, you have to have the engine running for about like 10 to 15 minutes just to get it nice and running, because when it's cold, it's um, very viscose. Yeah, the viscosity it, yeah, isn't high. Yeah. So when it's warmed up, the viscosity is a little bit more high. So then you pump it out when it's nice and warm, you pump it all out, the old oil. You check the gearbox oil. What I learned is that on some boats it'll be the same, the oil you use for the gearbox and the engine oil, but on others it would be two different types of oil, so you just want to make sure to get that right. I learned to check the power, so you check the power and the cooling system, so you see if you have enough water with the antifreeze. Um, for your your for your cooling system, and then that all the um, the pipes and everything is aligned properly. That comes from the ocean water to your system that cools the the, the fresh water inside. Yeah, that's but called a heat fixed. exchanger. Remember, yeah, we were talking about exchanger. the radiator, yes, like a car radiator. Heat, that's heat a closed exchanger. system. The heat exchanger yes, on a boat so is a closed the, system. The fresh water inside with the antifreeze, and then the cold water from the engine the ocean. cools the heat the water cools in the heat the, exchanger exactly. which cools the engine block and all that stuff also yeah. you want to check if there is in your um, water pump when it comes through that you have a what's that thing called the again? strainer a or strainer. your filter and you just check if that is clear so that there's no contaminations there like also, leaves and pieces of paper or anything I like that. that you have to grease it a little bit when you put it back on so that there's no air seeping in yeah. so if the air is coming in it'll shut off not going to be working um, so it's the power, check all your um, cables and stuff, that seem to be fine. It's the lubrication, that is the oil for the gearbox, and which is probably you don't have to ever really replace that much. Um, and then you have the oil, and that is the one that we drained and put in new oil again. Um, yeah. That's about it. That's yeah. about all of it. So the four main things are power, cooling system, cooling, lubrication, lubrication and fuel. Yes. That's it. That's okay. about it. And that if you do, if you replace your oil, as I say, every 100 to 120 hours with a new oil filter and oil and you check the fan belt, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then the fan belt has yeah. to have like one centimeter give. And yeah. then also it's at the bolt, at the alternators where you can loosen it up and tighten and it up a little bit it, yeah. if you yeah. have to. Yeah. But the, the one that we did today was fine. Okay. So that's, that's in it. a nutshell. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We're going to give this winch, it's a self-tailing winch, um, a service. Why are we going to give it a service? Making a squeaking sound when we 
use it. So. Okay, so let me get a let me get a winch handle and. Okay, does that give you an idea? Now go the other way. So remember, these winches have got two speeds. That's the faster speed, and that's the slow speed. Okay, and you can hear it uh, almost sounds like my knees going up the steps. So just tap them lightly with a hammer first, like this, to give them you give them a fright just to loosen the bolt. Okay, and then that's it. So all of those will come undone. So you can see we've taken the flange off, top flange, and this is the self tailor. And you can see it hasn't been serviced. Well, I've I've never serviced these winches in the last five years, so uh, I think it's about time. And you can see. So this crap here, you could just get off here. Use use this, this just very gently there. You can take all that shit off that's it there we are it seems cool. like grease that got old that's it's old, got, yeah, it got old, hard yeah, yeah the yeah. grease got hard old grease oh, i think my battery is looks as though it's slowly packing up i think so yeah so Just we've greased everything and we're charge. putting putting everything back again I said you must make sure that they they're lined up.